So it's really great to see you all here today. And, you know, we've had a lot to go on in our nation in just a few short, from last Sunday to this Sunday, right? Some real pivotal things have happened. And, you know, I felt like I, I prayed from Tuesday all week long. Sometimes I'd wake up at 3 a.m. and I'd pray some more because I felt like this service was going to be so important. It wouldn't be a do it right to act as if nothing had happened, to, let, to take the attitude of the elephant in the living room, right? So we have to own it. We have a new president-elect, Donald Trump. And we have a, a, a lot of conflict and turmoil in that. And shouldn't be, but I think when we as humans think that we're in charge instead of God, <laughs> we carry those things. But I'm here to tell you today, I hope what you'll take from this service today, don't have fear. Remember last week was don't let fear, love has no fear, remember that? Remember, let your light shine. We did a sermon on that, and we just sang it today, right? Let your light shine wherever you go. Imagine if all of those that are so scared and in so much conflict did that. Imagine if we understood that our president is Jesus Christ. And yes, we have a, a physical president here on this earth. And but guess what, folks? We're in the plane together, right? So we want him to be successful. Our Bible tells us to pray for our nation. We want him to be successful. If he's not successful, neither are we. You know, I saw a really interesting uh, quote this week on Facebook. How many people get on Facebook? I probably get on it way more than I need to. <laughs> but I do from time to time. And actually, that's how I steal pictures that my kids put up because they won't give me pictures. So I just grab them off Facebook and store them in my phone. And then I, well, I got pictures, so they don't know. I know all their business. Little did they know. <laughs> if it's on Facebook, I got it. So once I figured that out, I started doing Facebook. Anyway, it was an interesting quote because what they said is, if you're on a plane and the pilot is piloting the plane, you might want him to get to his final destination successfully, right? Because we're all on it together. And imagine if that plane crashed. So, and that was, that was kind of eye-opening. I thought, you know, they were absolutely right. We're on this earth together. But the beauty of our togetherness is we don't have to carry fear. We don't have to judge each other. We don't have to judge anyone. That's God's business. They're being deceptive or not. We trust that their love of people will take over in their hearts. And whoever God has placed in that, in that position is going to look for God for the guidance of what are they going to do next. And we hope everything is done in love. Everything. That's what we pray for our president, whether it's the one that's gone out or the one that's come in. We pray for them to be successful because it includes our success as well. But it also, not only that, gives us the opportunity to model love. You know, we say we love God. Remember what we read a couple of sermons ago? If we say we love God, who we can't see, and we love not our brother, who we can see, Anybody remember what it says? What was the rest of the scripture? Remember? You're a liar, right? You're lying. You're lying. And this time, when we go through times where we may as humans not agree, or we may feel a little off-centered, that's when we really get to trust God. That's when faith really comes out. Do you believe the God of the universe created you? I hope so. Do you believe that he sent his son to die for you? I hope so. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is alive? I hope so. And if you don't, ask your Lord to take the scales off your eyes. Because it's real. It's real. Don't take it from me. I'm 
mere human, just like you are. Take it from your scripture. Take it from your scripture. So the first thing, and I could go on and on, but I'm going to try to stay focused today. <laughs> the first thing that you're looking at, this is a quote by Dr. Martin Luther King. Can I see a show of hands? How many people know who Dr. Martin Luther King is? Great, great. Pretty much all of us, right? Dr. Martin Luther King was a minister, a pastor, a rabbi, whatever people want to call him, but he was a man of God, and he gave his life fighting for peace and love for all mankind. That was his fight. And so he has a lot of quotes, but I thought that there's a couple that I wanted to share with you, and I thought they, this one was really powerful. It was written in, 19, and he said this quote in 1964. Do we realize that's over 50 years ago? But you know what? It's just like some of the things we are going to read in our Bible. How many years ago were they? But they're applicable because the truth is the truth is the truth, and it just doesn't change. Now, I'm not trying to say Dr. Martin Luther King's words are, a, um, are a, from the Bible by any means, but what I am trying to tell you, this is a man of God who went to his scripture, his Bible, for guidance, as you and I have to do. We can't look at chaos around us. We can't suck into hate, no matter who's doing it. To check our own hearts and that's why the scripture the, the uh, sermon today is titled the breath breastplate and we'll unpack that a little bit more so let's read dr martin luther king jr's first quote through violence you may murder the hater but you do not murder hate in fact violence merely increases hate so it goes. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence. Multiplies it. Adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. I'll try to let you stay in front of me. Let's go on. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Right? Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And who is love? God, right? God is love. Only God. Only the love of Christ can drive out hate. Not more hate, not more violence. It just won't. No matter who thinks they can do it or who thinks they got it, they don't. If they're doing hate and they're being violent, it's just that simple. I'm sorry, I didn't keep you up with me, did I? <laughs> I'll try to do a better job of that. Okay, so the title of this sermon is the breath, breastplate of faith and love. So I thought to myself, well, where are you going to start? Well, you kind of got to start with knowing what a breastplate is. Now, it depends on kind of how it's used, you know, right? English is interesting. There are lots of definitions for the same word. So there's, if you look back in the Old Testament, the breastplate was actually worn. It was an apparatus that was worn by the high priest. And it had all these jewels and things on it. And it kind of let people know that they were a priest. And it was a show of respect. But then there was also, let's come to a little later in the, in the centuries, breastplates were used by soldiers. It was a part of their armor. And what that armor did is it protected from their heart to their lower torso. And the intent of that breastplate was when these, these uh, arrows were coming at them at amazing speeds, it protected their heart from being pierced and them being murdered. So that's what the breastplate did. 
it's interesting. So I thought, well, let me, I, what I don't like to do is I don't like to mix up Bible verses because I'm not trying to create a story for you, but it was important that in creating a story, I didn't want to guide you all over the Bible. Goodness knows we can go a lot of different places. But I did want to make the breastplate come alive and the protection of the heart and what God says about the heart to come alive for you. So let's look at Proverbs 4, verses 32. And we're reading in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. In, in chapter, verse 23, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. Our heart is the center of our lives. Intellectually, we all know that, right? Heart beats everything. It beats all the blood through the rest of our body. So without our heart, that's why the heart is such a powerful analogy. You don't protect your heart. You pretty much lose your, your, your life. And so that's why the heart, and the heart is used in so many places in the Bible to tell us how important it is that we don't let evil into our hearts, that we don't let discord into our hearts, that we don't allow our hearts to take on hate. Very, very important. That we absorb love, compassion for in our hearts. That's what you want to carry in your heart. You don't want to carry those other things because the other things are destructive to the body, destructive to the heart. So put on the full armor, the breastplate. Protect your heart. Okay, so now that we know what the breastplate is, let's, let's go on. So, as you all know, I always like to tell you a little history. So, I want you to know why we're reading that scripture and what, when was the scripture written, who wrote it, and what do we care from, take away from it. Now, Proverbs, the Proverbs that I read to you was written by Solomon. Remember? Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever lived. He prayed for wisdom, and God gave him that. So, the, the, that gives you a little authority of Solomon writing that. He's writing it with authority. So who wrote, we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians tonight, this morning. We're going to be in chapter 5, and we're going to read scriptures 1 through 28. Now, 1 Thessalonians was written by the Apostle Paul, and he wrote it to the church of Thessalonians. <laughs> You know, your brain just kind of goes. You know how many times I've said this? First Thessalonians was written for the church of Thessalonica. And that church was founded by Paul, the Apostle Paul. And Timothy and Silas were his partners in developing the church. So to paint a picture, Timothy kind of came to him and said, Oh, people are scared. They're worried about the return of Christ. They're worried about all this turmoil, and when is Christ going to return, and what are we going to do? Sound familiar? <laughs> How many pastors, teachers, fellow Christians have you heard that from? It's the end times. It's, it's over. It's over. We're, gonna, we're, we're gone. We're gone. It's over. They were doing the same thing in the church of Thessalonians. The same thing, because this, kids, it's not new. This is not new. This fear has always been there. But the knowledge that you don't have to carry that fear, that's what I want you to carry away today. You don't have to carry that fear. So Paul's talking to them about that. So let's see what Paul says. Oh, I forgot to tell you. It was written in 52 to 54. AD, somewhere in that time frame. Remember, sometimes I, you know, try to stay up with me. <laughs> sometimes what happens is I know what I want to say so well that I kind of get ahead of the slide. So I'll try to stay on track because 
you're kind of reading along with me, and that's important. So, I already told you that what Paul wrote, that this, this letter to the, to the church, he wrote it trying to talk to them about the Lord, the coming of the Lord. So that's where, the, that's where chapter 5 starts out at. So let's go to verse 1 of chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you know I love the way Paul, brothers and sisters is his way of endurance, enduring, it's enduring. He's, in his letter he wants them to say, brothers, sisters, listen, hear me. Hear this. You do not need to have anything written to you. He said, you know, I'm writing you this, but you really don't have to have it written to you because you kind of know this, but you're forgetting it. For you and you un yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Ultimately, what he's trying to tell them is don't worry about the day of the Lord. But let's go on and see what else he says in that. So let's look at verses 3 and 4. Um, I was warned not to do that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Someone may have to help come help me try. I'm really not trying to black it out on you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. We're back. <laughs> you guys are so awesome and patient. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, so 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 3 and 4. Let's read on. I remember he was saying that nobody knows. It's really like a thief in the night, right? When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. See, when they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. Now, Paul's not trying to scare them. He's just trying to really emphasize to them that when you're seeing chaos, don't worry about those things. What he's really telling them is you're not in charge. We're not in charge of these things. God is. And as we get deeper into this scripture, we'll see that. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. So what do you think Paul is saying like by that? It can be interpreted a lot of ways. A lot of people use it as a fear stick to beat people over the head. The end times are here. It's coming. You're going to, you know, destruction for everyone. But that's the darkness. You don't walk in darkness. You walk in light. Your light is faith in Jesus Christ and the love of the God that created us. And then we're going to see, as Paul goes on, how he really gets that true to them. Okay, let's go on. And if I don't keep you up, don't feel like you can't tell me. <laughs> okay, there we are. So verses 5 through 7. For you are all children of light. Didn't I just say that? And children of the day. We are not of the night or darkness. Folks, you are the children of God. Everybody is. Problem is they just don't know it. You're here learning it, and you know it. And if you don't ask for it, you know this. You are not in darkness. Verse 6. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. What Paul's trying to tell them there is that these things are happening and going on, and people are just kind of la-di-da-di-da-di-da, 
It is not a fear tactic. It's a faith tactic. It's to help you walk in faith, not in fear, in love, not in hate, in knowledge and understanding and wisdom. That's what these scriptures are for. And they were good then for the church, and they're good today for you and everybody else that's willing to listen. Let's go on to verses 8 and t through 10. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet and for a helmet the hope of salvation. So the breastplate for faith and love and the helmet for hope and salvation. Know in your mind Jesus Christ is alive. It's alive. You know that. Have the hope in that, knowing that you have salvation. No one can take it away from you, no matter how they may want to weave it. No one can take it away. When Jesus Christ died on that cross, he died so that you can live, even though we're sinners. We're all sinners. So no, we can't work it. We, there's no magic. We want to accept that love and accept that grace. For God has destined us not for wrath. Did you hear that? God didn't bring you here to destroy you. He did not destine you, yes, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the only one who can give us salvation. And it's given. It's done. You have it. Know that. Know it. Put it in your heart and let no one take it away. No one. You don't need to walk in fear. Who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Wow, <laughs> right? Remember the story about my little great granddaughter? Like, wow, right? It's a wow moment. It's an aha moment. It's an epic moment. It's a moment of understanding that I want you to carry. You're going to see a lot of darkness around you. Pray for it. Pray for it. Pray for our brothers and sisters that are in darkness. Pray for them. Love them. Let's not judge them. Let's love them. Let's take the love we knowledge we have and let's pay it forward. Let's carry it with us. I'm sorry. I didn't keep you up, did I? Now I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Okay. Now you're up with me. Okay. Let's look at 5 through 11. No. Oh, does this sound like what I was just saying? Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. So Paul is acknowledging. He knows that, oh, you're doing it, but let's keep doing it. This is why coming here is so powerful, because our lives are kind of disjointed. And we are, some of us are over here, and we work over there, and some of us are going to school over here, and we're all over the place. So this is a good place to come and get that affirmation of who we are. And we get to support each other in where we're going. And if you've had a horrible day, this is a comfortable place. It should be. And, oh, I wouldn't want it anyway. This should be a place of joy, a place of comfort, a place that you can be loved on and bring your friends, your family, it's about that love, and it's that knowledge we have to pay forward as you're doing. So now let's kind of summarize what we've done from, we've learned from Paul from verses 1 through 11. It says, we are not in darkness. Remember? We are not in darkness. We are children of light. The light is God, Jesus Christ. We are children of light. Put on the breastplate of faith and love.
Protect your heart. Protect your heart with faith and love, not hate, not rage. Faith and love, that's what you're going to protect your heart with. Put on the helmet of hope, of salvation. You have that hope. You have salvation. Jesus died and gave that to you. Keep it there. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your heart. Because there's a lot out there that will try to get you to think about something else. Get distracted with all of the protesting and things that are going on. All the rhetoric we hear sometimes from our leaders. We'll get kind of off-centered with that. You know, so many times when I was studying theology in college and I would read about all the different theolo theologians, all the different denominations, I thought, oh my goodness, wow. <laughs> How am I going to know this? And then I thought, hang on to what you know. You know what I knew? Jesus Christ is a I don't care how many different denominations there are out there. That's what they better be built on. Jesus Christ is love. That's what it's better be built on. If it's not built on those things, folks, then you might want to reconsider it because it has to be. God gives us salvation through Jesus Christ and encourage and build up each other. Very important. Now, I'll try to speed it up just a little bit. So let's look at verses 12 through 13. And this was the final um, greetings, benedictions, uh, exhortations. It was the final things that Paul was going to leave them with. So let's look at verse 12. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. So Paul's telling them, you know, have respect for your leaders that are guiding you. Know that they're teaching you the word of God. And that's why he throws that out there. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. So he's just telling them, as leaders, we can only do so much. You're going to have to carry it too. We carry this torch together is how Paul is explaining it to him. Verse 14, and we urge you, sorry. Yeah, yeah, oh, thank you. I'll stop driving and let you yeah, take over. Yeah, you <laughs> okay, verse 14 and 18. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the elders, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. We're going to have people among us that are just plain scared. Be, if you're feeling strong, if you're having courage that day, encourage them. Inspire them. If they're scared, let them know you don't have to be scared. God's in charge. You don't have to be scared. Your father knows all. Nothing happens by accident. And we don't know the end of the story, but trust me, God does. And that's what's important. That's what I want you to carry. See that none of you, oh, really hang on this one. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seeks to do good to one another and to all. See, a lot of people think that that one another means just your fellow Christians in the church. It means everybody, folks. That's why that um, song that Janie and Michelle did was so powerful, because it talked about let your light shine. Where? At your workplace, at your school, among one another. Let your light shine. So, so important. Rejoice always. Now, it's kind of hard to rejoice, especially for, for all of us, really, when we see so much going on. But there is a lot to rejoice for and count your blessings. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God wants you to be happy. 
He wants you to experience joy, rejoicing, giving thanks, thankfulness. Trust me, my sisters and brothers, there's so much to be thankful for. And let's look at verses 19 through 23. Do not quench the spirit. We've talked about the spirit. The Holy Spirit is your comforter, and it's here for each and every one of us. Don't push it down. Don't push it away. Sometimes I think someone told me once that they got really angry, and they thought, Father, Lord, just get away. I got this. I got this one. <laughs> we don't have anything without the love of Christ. So that's what we want to embrace, that love of Christ. Do not despise the words of prophets. Now look at what Paul goes on to say. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Abstain from every form of evil. Trust what is good. You're going to hear about prophecy. You're going to hear about it's the end times. Well, I don't know, folks. My scripture just told me I'm not going to know. And there are other places in the Bible where it will tell you even the angels don't know. Don't worry about the end time. Don't worry about things you don't need to worry about. Just trust God. Trust the process. And know you are okay. And teach it to your children and anyone else that will listen. Kids are scared. Guess what? So are adults. We're all scared, but who takes away fear? Jesus takes away fear. The love of Christ takes away fear. So just hang on to that love. Embrace your little ones. Embrace each other. Hang on to that love. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's saying, you know, focus on the things you can do. Let yourself be blameless. Because I'm telling you, if you don't, you're not dying. You're not going to hell. You're simply, because Christ gave you salvation, but life is a lot harder than it needs to be. It feels really good when you carry love in your heart. It feels really bad when we hate on each other. Really, really bad. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do these, this. And then Paul goes on. Beloved, pray for us. And that's applicable today, folks. Pray for each other. Pray for each other. And he goes on to say that. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. Now, that was of their time, and that's what they did. When they greeted each other, they kissed. When we greet each other, we shake hands. We hug, and sometimes we kiss. And that's a good thing. What we're doing in that greeting is saying, hello, I love you. And those greetings are important, and they're, they're, they make people feel good. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. The grace of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So what Paul was saying is he wanted everybody to know the things that he was teaching them. He wanted them to, to really understand how important it was not to worry and get sunk into darkness, but stay in that light. Stay in that light of the love of Christ. Shine, shine, shine. Shine that love on one another and everybody else you meet. There's a lot of scared people out there because there's a lot of negative things going on, right? There's a lot of negative things going on. But I, what I really want you to carry away is don't get sunk into that negative stuff. Take the high ground. Stay high. Stay high. High in your love of Christ. Stay in that love. Stay in that light. Stay in that spirit. Nothing can touch you. Absolutely nothing. What key points do we have today? Do not repay evil for evil. Abstain from every form of evil. You might be tested in that this week. Abstain in every form. Do not abstain from evil. 
let's not judge right or wrong. Let's look at us. <laughs> you know, let's not worry about the, the little, what, the splinter in your brother's eye while we got a plank hanging out of our own, right? <laughs> you know the scripture. Let's not worry about those things. Encourage one another. Sometimes you're going to be up and sometimes you're going to be down. Make that phone call to the person that encourages you. Be the one who inspires and encourages everyone else. Put on the breastplate of faith and love. And who is love? God is love. Come on, guys. One more time. Who is love? God is love. That's right. God is love. So I'm going to end this, and then we're going to pray with one more quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. And this one, did you know that he got the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964? He did. They don't just hand out peace prizes. They give them to people who represent peace in the world. And that's what he did. Nonviolence is the answer to the critical, political, and moral questions of our time. 1964. Think it applies in our time? Yes, it does. The need for man to overcome oppression and violence without resorting to oppression and violence. We don't take violence and give violence. It just doesn't work. Man must evolve for all human conflict, a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. Who is love? God is love. God is love. That's right. That's who is love. And I think we're going to end in a prayer, and then we're going to have one more song. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this awesome service. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father, for giving us the opportunity to come together in community and celebrate you. We praise you, Father, with all our hearts, and we are so thankful. We're thankful to be able to meet together. We're thankful for the meal that you have provided for us and that you've blessed us with. And we thank you, Father, for our relationships with one another. We ask, Father, that you will protect each and every one of us as we go throughout the week, as we travel to our homes. Help us, Father, to feel your presence in everything we do throughout this week. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.